abortion and the pregnancy clinic. This is part three and it is the final episode. In this part, I'm simply sitting down with Pam and we're going to take some time. I'm gonna take some time to just ask her some questions and she's going to give us some answers. I've chosen to put this part in black and white so that the emphasis really is upon the words. So please make sure you're listening. This is a little longer than my usual episodes, but everything in here is really important. By the time you get to the end of the Q&A with Pam and myself, she's gonna address you directly or some people that you may know. So make sure you stay tuned in all the way to the end and pay careful attention to the words that she's saying. Um, these are some of the questions that come up in my mind. One, one is I'm used to the rhetoric in our culture that says planned parenthood is giving women choices. But the interesting thing is since I've been here, it sounds like through your educational processes, the, your medical abilities, that you, at least it seems to me, that you are actually the one that are giving more choices and options. What do you think about, just in terms of that rhetoric? Yeah. I think that's absolutely true. Um, Planned Parenthood sells abortions. They are the biggest abortion provider in the world. Okay. Um, the preg and they and they only um, they gain financial money through those abortions. Um, if they don't sell them, they don't make money. Um, we don't sell anything. We don't have a financially vested interest in a woman's mm -hmm. decision. We really care about her. That's why we're here foundationally. We'll tell her right up front. You know, abortion is your choice. It is your legal choice in America to do this. Um, no matter what your age, and in Maryland, you can be 12 years old and get an abortion without your parents' consent. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. abortion is a forever decision, and no matter what you decide, whether you choose to carry and parent, or choose to carry in place for adoption, or choose to have an abortion, it's a decision forever. And so you need to slow down, and you need to think about it and you need to educate yourself and get all that information so that you make a really good decision because you have to live with that. I don't have to live with your decision. See, that, that ends up being a different message yeah. to me because the message I hear when I'm just watching the media is that if a person, if a, if a woman were to come here, uh, she's going to be made to feel guilty and um, you're going to pressure her into things that she doesn't want to do, but it sounds like you're actually doing the opposite. Yeah, well, we feel that we are. Okay. Um, they, they, they want to say that. Um, and women may feel guilty. We have people coming in that have had abortions before okay. that um, when they hear the truth about it, a lot of times they have that internal guilt. That's kind of been, um, that is a little bit of an issue um, because society has also told women, once you have that abortion, just stuff it down and get on with your life. Okay. And as believers, we know that that is going to eventually bubble up someplace in women's lives. And so in our post-abortion ministry, it's not always our clients we see, but it's women in churches that had abortions years ago. Right. That those issues, because they haven't dealt with them, come up. Well, for them, you can't just forget it and move on. For us, there has to be that reconciliation to Christ, which also means confession. Right. Okay. As far as in, you know, of what they actually did and, and their role in it and then asking for forgiveness. And we know that that's there, but it doesn't happen automatically. It's not just a glazing over like society wants women to think. So women might leave with that, but they're not gonna get that because of something they heard. Okay. They will never hear in our counseling room, um, you know, you have an abortion, you're a murderer. That's never gonna be said. Hmm. Um, we love women, we're gonna care there for them. use that kind of language with people. There are, unfortunately. And I think the way that our culture is receiving that is, you're not allowing me to have the freedom to make an intelligent decision. You're just trying to work on my will and coerce me. Yeah. Whereas everything I've heard from you is you are trying to educate women so that they know what they're doing. Is yeah, that right? And that's Am like, I missing this? No, you, I'm not you, an expert you got on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll notice too, like we're first and foremost a Christian organization and a ministry um, and stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you didn't see any crosses anywhere. Mm -hmm. You didn't see a lot of Jesus speak. You didn't see little booties sitting around. Right, right. There's yeah. not going to be any of that. When people come That's in, true. you know, we want them to be comfortable. Um, you know, people do have that preconceived notions of Christians and what they're going to get. And so if we hung a big sign out there that said, come on in, there's some church ladies in here going to talk to you. Most people would have a completely different connotation of what they're going to hear. Right. Um, you know, but we want them to come in and we want to be um, kind and loving and winsome. 
um, to them. We want them to know that we do care about them and they can trust us with that information, that it's going to be held confidential, um, and that we are going to listen. We want to hear their story. We're not here just to, to talk to them and preach at them. They're not going to get hit over the head with the, the gospel. Um, you know, we're going to ask kind questions about that. You know, were you raised in the church? Do you have any religious background? What does that mean for you? Would you like to talk about it? And ask permission for that. Um, and, you know, for some people that even might feel invasive. Um, but for us, we know we aren't being, but we're being very careful in that, very respectful yeah. um, to women because ultimately it's her choice when she leaves here. Yeah, that's um, true. And so, that's true. you know, we just want to give her that information um, and let her know too to look around and see. Like, we'll ask a lot of other questions too. We'll ask her about her sexual history. When did she become sexually active? Um, how old was she? Was it her choice? We want to know that. Like, if not, like, that has a lot to do with maybe the choices she's making now. Um, what about her partner? You know, what does he think about this? Does he know she's here? Um, maybe even asking about how many sexual partners uh, he's had. Has she, he been tested lately? Does she trust that information? And a lot of the questions even aren't so much for our information, but to get her thinking about things. You know, she's making choices every day with her body and, and what is, what's it based on. And so we really want her to think about things because a lot of times the information that she's hearing from other people has to do with how her decision is going to impact them. Mm. The father of the baby, it's going to impact him. So he, what he's saying to her has a lot to do with that, her family, her friends. Um, and so for us, we can just say, your decision is not going to impact us, but it is going to impact you. And so you need to see, you know, how is, how is that? You know, you just told me you're a Christian um, and you know that ab abortion, according to the Bible, is wrong and, and that it's murder. And so if that's the case, how are, how are you going to, what does God have to say about that? What do you think that that means? How do you think he's going to react when you've just said that you know he knows it's wrong? Right. Um, and so you have to deal with that the rest of your life. Like, yeah. let's talk through that. And 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 how does that how does that sit in yourself as far as your spirit? Um, and so we do have that because we do have Christian women walking in here every day um, from the local churches. They come here, and so we really try and challenge them. But we do that after we've asked them, you know, questions about themselves and what are they basing that decision on. You know, same thing for the women that are, are making that decision because it's not good timing. Well, when is good timing? Yeah. What does that mean? Um, you know, what's different in six months from now or a year from now than, than it is now? And really help them kind of work through that so that they don't look back. Because the women that we see that have had abortions in their past, 50% say that, say that if they had known then what they know now, they wouldn't make that decision. And we don't want women to have that regret. We want them to, if they're gonna make that decision, they had all the information possible when they made that decision. Um, and so they can they can say, this is what I did, I weighed it, and this is what I did. And it's like, okay, all right. You, if I were a woman, I would come here. Yeah. This is, <laughs> this is amazing, So, <laughs> So, um, yeah, and we I guess really if, And if, even if I were, um, if I had an unplanned pregnancy in someone when I was who I was dating, if I were in that situation or yeah. something like that, then yeah. I'm sold. Come in. We ask women <laughs> on the phone. You know, what about your partner? We have we have male counselors. We call them our MVPs, right. our yeah. male volunteer presence, that are in certain offices at certain times, and we will make an arrangement to have one here that can talk to your partner. Yeah. Um, and so, because for us, we That's know good. that he's part of that equation. In fact many, a vast majority of the, of the abortions are done either by his omission or commission. Uh -huh. Either because he's not there and she feels she has no support, or he's saying, well, you need to have this abortion, here's this money, or I don't care what you do, but I'll pay for it, or I don't know if I'll be around. Yeah. It could be a lot of different things, but a lot of times he's basing that on information. He doesn't know. And so um, we have, um, I think we have six or eight men now that have taken the training that know how to sit and listen to another man and talk to him from a man's perspective um, on the situation and also talk to him about what does it mean uh, to be a man. Yeah, you know, right. men, are, men are made to be protectors um, and care for women and children and, and how does this relate when you're talking That's to her right. about having an abortion. So what would you say, just looking at the camera, let's say there are men watching this who are in a situation where they can influence the woman in their life. What would you, what do you have to say to them? Yeah. Um, you need to think about your role as a man. You, you know, you talk about providing for women and caring for maybe your wife or your girlfriend, um, something like that, along that order. What does that mean when it comes to your unborn child? Um, you know, to be that protector, to stand up um, for that child. And I would say get that, 
get that information and talk to another man that's been in that situation before. Um, there are a lot of fears, there are a lot of unknowns, um, but to really get that information, think about that, and think about what that means to be a man and, and your role in this, pr this unexpected pregnancy. Yeah, and what would you say to the women that are watching this? Yeah, I would say um, reach out and find information um, from people that are not going to make money from you. Um, we are not going to ask for your money. Um, we don't make any money off of you. Your, your decision is, is yours. Um, we just want to make sure that you have all that information before you make that final decision. Um, we are here because we care about women. Um, God has called us. This is a ministry. However, um, he's called us to do that. And our role is to share the information about being in an unexpected pregnancy with you. Um, you know, what's going on in your life, what's causing you to make those decisions. Um, and then if you're not pregnant, um, you know, about 40% of the women we see are not pregnant. Um, what about the choices that you're making in your life? What's driving you to make those decisions? Do you have goals and dreams for the future? And are the decisions that you're making that put you in this position of a possible unexpected pregnancy, are they helping you reach your goals? Um, and if not, how could you maybe change some of the decisions and actions that you're taking so that you can reach the goals that you have in your life?